but the psalm says, you know, the other ground is sinking. It's sinking so fast. And so many of us these days, because of the pandemic and all the things that have been made available, we are taking, we're letting something else come into our heart. We're not guiding our heart. We're not guiding our mind. We're not guiding those things that the Lord God, <clears throat> excuse me, has given to us. But we're allowing some things to cripple into our spirit. You know, you need to be very careful social media, even though I'm talking over it this morning, it's a very good and wonderful tool, but it's also a tool that can also bring you down so very far. It's a very, very wonderful tool. Let me drink a bit of water. I know there's nothing in my throat, but somehow every now and then when I shout, I yell, something seems to be blocking my throat. Praise be to God. Will you stretch your hand and pray for me so I can deliver this message properly in Jesus' mighty name. Praise be to God, the minister, where you're praying. <clears throat> and somebody's just saying, Pastor, will you cough up? And we know, we understand. I got you. Amen. So praise be to God. I'm just shy because, you know, when you're coughing these days, people go, what, is, what kind of cough is that? You know, so you, you need to be careful. So you wanted to cough, you have to like, you know, I was at the grocery store the other day and the lady was coughing and all of a sudden I can see the cat. Everybody, the bug, everything moving so fast, you know, because the coffee was one, two, and all of a sudden, even the, the cashier, everybody was like, okay, I'm not having this mask, is going out faster, and everybody's, you know, adjusting themselves. Nobody's saying, bless you. Nobody's saying anything. You know, this is what the enemy is up to. Now, you following what I'm saying? We know because of what is going on, yes, we should not lose a sense of love and blessing. Yes, protect yourself, but also be careful. Hallelujah, Lord. So it is important. You see someone going through stuff, need a cup of water. Hallelujah. As long as you do your part and all that, be quick to help and lift someone up. Maybe she's choking and all that, but you know just fully. Hallelujah, Lord. I will always come in and, you know, I'm actually, let me not lie to you. You know, I was I was about to, you know, uh, vote myself. And, you know, but something just held my feet down and said, what would Jesus do? You know, and I talked to her and I said, are you okay, man? Bless you. You know, it's okay. Cough out. You know, I said, thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. And just like that, when you show out of kindness to someone, it is easy for someone to come around to you. And because I was able to be bold enough to say, bless you, there was another, you know, person going by and saying, are you okay? Do you need water? Can I get you water? I can pay for it. You know, I'm right there with uh, this grocery store and, you know, just the two people who were trying to started coming back. But it takes one to make a difference. Hallelujah, Lord. We have not been given the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of sound mind. We need to believe, we need to understand. Yes, the world wants us to go in different direction, but we need to know the direction that Christ wants us to go through. He said, I've been done all to stand. Stand in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, the world always go one direction, but we have to go the direction that the world doesn't want to go. And Jesus Christ is that way. And when he said to us, this is the way, because we live in this world. You know, the system, our thinking, everything wanted to, you know, yield to this world system. And that's why this morning I wanted to talk to you about trust. Trust is very important, but there's so many voices we're hearing and somehow we're so confused. And the Bible says in the book of James 1, I believe it says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You know, you are not here, you are not here, you are not there. And the Bible talks about it in the book of Revelation, that Jesus Christ is speaking to the church. And you know the church is talking about that some church that were lukewarm, they're not hot, they're not cold. And we see many believers are living in that life today, you know, cold, hot, you know, they're not consistent. And we need to be consistent because God never changed. The Bible says He the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never ever changed. So I want to encourage you today, and the title of the word today is Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And you know where I'm going with that in the book of Praise be to God, the book of Proverbs. Proverbs, we read from verse 3. Proverbs, uh, Proverbs chapter 3. And let's probably start from verse 1. Let's start from verse 1. And we need to read. <clears throat> Praise be to God. Yes, my truth is better now. Welcome back. Amen. It says, My son, do not forget my law. Do not forget my word. When you see the law here, do not forget my word. Praise be to God. Let your heart. This is something that you need to underline. You need to take note of. Let your heart keep my 
commandment. And the commandment here, I'm not talking about the Ten Commandments because I've talked about, about the very important commandment that Jesus Christ talks about. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your soul, and your mind. Hallelujah, Lord. And the second commandment is like the same. Love your neighbor as yourself. It says, let your heart keep my commandment. It says, for length of days and life uh, and long life and peace they will be added to you peace will be added to you when you stand upon the word of god hallelujah lord whether you feel you're young maybe you feel like okay i don't really care i don't if you do living your life without jesus christ no matter what the situation is no matter how the circumstances is many of us are following trend those who are setting those things they are not sure who they are. The Bible says a blind person cannot lead a blind person. Are you following what I'm saying? I used to I share with you guys, there used to be a time in my own days too that we used to have some kind of funny hairstyle. And you see people walking funny, you know, walking so funny. And we thought it was the cool thing. They're walking like they're limping and they're walking like that. And we started copying those habits. But today you see, even in our society, it has changed. How people are talking, how they are walking, you see the way people are singing, you see all kinds of things. Everything is changing. But one thing that never changed is the word of God. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. See here, it said, let not mercy and truth forsake you. It said, bind them around your neck. Bind the mercy, the truth of God, the word of God. Bind them around your neck. Wear it like proud. It's not like the cross you wear. Some of us don't even remember we have cross on our neck every now and then. So when the enemy comes against us like a, like a flock, we chicken up. We don't understand that we even know who we are in Jesus' name. Some of us wear the cross. And every time people see us, guess what proceed from our mouth? Negative word, things that is not of God. Hallelujah, Lord. Just like I can just give you an example of the encounter at the grocery store. You know, when the word is going the other direction and someone was need of just simple, bless you. Are you okay? It's just too hard to do that these days. But God never failed. He never changed. Those of us who are him, we know who we, are, who we are in Jesus' name. Because his word is a lamp to our feet and light to our path in Jesus' name. I know who I am. I'm reminded every day by day that wisdom is the principal thing. In all my getting, get understanding. And getting understanding is diving into the word of God in Jesus' name. And here it says, write them on the table of your heart. And so... It's, and, and so, so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Now, this is the part we talk about from time to time in verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Take a moment, think about it. Trust in the Lord. But trusting in the Lord does not mean that things won't happen. Trusting in love didn't mean that you will not come to a place or a point in time in your life that you will have some doubt or you will have some situation. But that's what the word of God says, trust in me. It trust in me. Look unto me. Jesus said, it is finished. Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never leave you. So when you feel like even your earthly parent, your spouse, your children and doing the right thing. You feel at times that you're lonely, you're alone. But Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. But pastor, it's never easy. That's why you need to trust in the Lord through his word. Because God and his word are one. But if you're looking like what you watch in the movie, that you say, are you there? You know, yeah, it's okay, whichever way. Some people don't even know what movie they say. Are you really God? Are you really there? You know, and all those things. And people pray like that and say, I don't say anything, but that's not the way you should pray. I know who I am. My Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because you never leave me. You never forsake me. I know that I'm going through some situation at this moment, but I know what the Word of God says. I know what your Word says, that you want all things together for my good. 
I know what your word says, that your plan towards me, they are plan of good and not of evil. I know you're going to work things out for me in Jesus' name. I know the enemy my men are because the Bible reminds me that he has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But you have come that I might have life and I cannot have life. It's by getting into your world. It's by diving into your world. It's by applying the word of God on my heart, in my heart, and practicing what your word says in Jesus' name. Because whenever you wanted to open your mouth, the enemy would test you and say it's not possible. But I believe in the word of God. I believe in the report of the word of God that says I am healed. Even though it doesn't feel like I'm healed. But I believe it because God is not a man who should lie. Neither is he a son of man who should repent. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. That means we are at the time where trust is low. And many are trusting the Lord with some of their heart. With a little bit of their heart. And when you do that, you can never be stable. If you don't trust God with all of your heart, you will not, you will not be stable. My ways are not your ways. What you're seeing is not real. What you're operating here with or what you're surrounded here is the wisdom of this world. But God used the wisdom of this world to confirm the wise. The wisdom of God is unsearchable. You can. You were not there when he formed you. You were not there when he put you here. He has a plan. He has a purpose for you. Yes, you might have been lost before, but the grace of God found you and brought you back. And some will say, it's because of the parent, it's because of my circumstances, it's because my family do not have Beverly Hill Mansion, it's because we were not born in second place. But guess what? His grace found you where you are. Amazing grace. Hallelujah. Lord. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And you don't want the re reputation of the same thing that has happened in the past. And I thank the Lord God for the children talking this morning about generation costs and things like that. But how do you stop all those things and say you don't want the same thing that happened to your parent or your loved one to repeat with you? It's by standing on the word of God. Now you have a father. Hallelujah, Lord. He never failed you. He will never disappoint you. He goes ahead of you to make every crooked place plain for you. What you got to do is to trust in him. Totally with him and his word. Trust in him. Yeah. And when you wear the cross, you're not wearing it for sure. But you mean it with all of your heart. And say, God, I'm standing with you because you've always gone right by me. And that's what it's supposed to mean. I am not ashamed of the gospel. And it's one of the first things that was a Paul wrote in the book of Rome. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. We see today, you want to be accepted. You want friends to like you. You want to be popular. You want people to say you're good. You want this, you want that. Those things will help you. It will make you feel good temporarily. But there's no assurance that a moment after you're going to be okay. It's just a temporary thing. It's just a temporary solution. But God is eternal. Hallelujah, Lord. His love is eternal. The Bible says, what we were yes, sin. Christ died for you and I. It doesn't matter how small you are. It's not too late to start trusting in the Lord God. I've had the testimony of people as young as they were in their age, they trust God and they follow Jesus Christ and they kept on following Him. It didn't mean that they don't make mistakes. There are people that come to church because I have no, I have no choice. I have no choice. You have a choice. And you got to make up your mind or you don't make up your mind. You got to make up your mind. When you're going to go through trial, and I believe that children are here this morning, whatever trial or tribulation you're going to face, no matter how your mother or your father loved you, they can't help you through some of these things. You got to go through those by yourself. No matter how they love you, just think about it. They love you so much, they can't help you write your exam. They can't help you do your EQAO. You have to do all those things yourself. Whatever it is, if you don't study, study to show yourself approved. If you don't do those things, you're just going to be by yourself. I can carry you on my shoulder, but sooner or later I'm going to drop you. No matter how I am, I'm going to leave you, I'm going to try. Because some of us are blessed with more than one children. And I can only do one at a time. 
It is only God that can carry you forever and ever. That's why you got to trust in Him, in Jesus' name. With Jesus, you can make it. Without Jesus, you're nothing. And today we find out that messages that we're preaching and teachings and all that is about, oh, it's like a serenity message. You're okay. You, it's about like becoming like mixing stuff and not getting into the real fruit of the word of God. It is the word of God does not make you feel, you know, it slaps you on the face, right? And when it slaps you, you stand straight and you look unto God. Hallelujah. It's not rubbing hand on you and making you feel it's going to be okay. Some of us are lying to people. We know we need to tell them, snap out of this. You're doing the wrong thing. This is the right way. Oh, we just want someone to say, it's okay. That's how we speak in, 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 in this era. No, God has never changed. The enemy does not do business, you know, like that. The enemy has come, but to steal to kill and to destroy. It didn't say you're in the 2001. I'm gonna just, <laughs> you know, rub Vaseline on those things. He's here to stop you even deeper. And you need to understand that Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. We're having a hope in mankind and things, it's okay. But your hope should be in Jesus. Everything you have must be to the glory of God. You are created to worship. You are created to praise Him. And that's what the Bible says, and do not lean to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge the Lord, and He shall direct, or He will direct your path in all your ways in whatever situation in whatever circumstances in whatever things acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your path you're looking for direction you're not spending time in trusting God you're not spending time in reading the word of God some of us like I said I love reading books but I spend time reading the word of God because I want God to give me my own experience. I want to have my own encounter. Do you see today even on the Christian network, read my book. If you read my book, you will be changed for life. It's the word of God that changes you. Hallelujah. Revelation comes through the word of God. Yes, people have some things that they will write that they've gone through something. Maybe when you read it, you can see that you're not alone in that. But don't make that your life and reading things. Read the word of God. In Jesus' name, I pray and ask the Lord God to open the eyes of your heart that you might be able to see Him. God is going to give you your own fresh revelation in Jesus' mighty name. The Holy Ghost is at work, it's in you. Your race is not somebody else's race. Your journey is not somebody else's journey. What somebody else asks is not the same. But God is saying, I will never leave you. He will always meet you at the point of your need. If you're down, because somebody refused to get back up, doesn't mean you need to stop. You know, you need to get back up. You're not that person in Jesus' mighty name. If you find yourself down, get back up again. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up in Jesus' name. Jesus is picking you up. He's stretching his hand towards you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Many of us are going about these days and saying, yes, the end is here. Yes, I believe it. But doesn't mean that the gospel will not be preached. The gospel will be preached through you. You got to do your part. Like the woman that is coughing. Will you support her? You might be the only Jesus someone will ever know. You might be the only Jesus someone will ever see. You are not too small to be used by God. Everyone is called. Everyone has the measure of faith. Let us apply our heart toward the word of God. Let us apply our heart to his word in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. And that's why I wanted to go over here to the book of Jeremiah. So I'm running up quickly. I know I'm way beyond my time. I apologize. Praise be to God. Jeremiah, let me give you this. Jeremiah 29. Hallelujah. Praise be to God from verse 11. Let's read it and see what the word of God says. It says, For I know the thought that I take towards you, saith the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil. So somebody said, God, why is bad thing happen to believers or Christians? I know the thought I take towards you. 
thought of good and not of evil to give you a future and a hope then this is the key word here that we don't read and we don't talk about and that is in verse 12 in verse 12 here it said then you will come upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you then you will come upon me and go your way to pray and I will listen to you you will seek me and find me when you search for me with what somebody with what all of your what heart then in verse 13 it said and you will seek me and you'll find me hallelujah in verse 14 I mean and I will be found by you when you do this with all of your heart the Lord said I will be found by you he's right there you're looking for direction and you're willing to seek God and to seek him you gotta trust him and you gotta trust in the word of God like the hymn said trust and obey for there is no other way but to be in Jesus to be happy in Jesus praise be to God trust and obey praise be to God it is important friends and family there are a lot of things happening there's no anything for me to tell you that you have not seen or witnessed it, even on the TV you see the devastation going on among the indigenous the injustice things unthinkable it's just to tell you the heart of mankind is desperately wicked use all form of things to you know do stuff that shouldn't be done families loved ones community tear apart because of what the Bible said the heart of man is desperately wicked and look at on top of that look at a nation it's a need of God like never before rather than crying out to God it's not a parade it's not those things I'm not calling anybody's name it's about calling upon the name of Jesus Christ the fire is ravaging the west coast of Canada and guess who are going through stuff more again Guess those who are losing their home. We need to pray and believe. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love them as yourself. Cry out. I don't know. No, cry out in the name of Jesus Christ. The same fire going all the way. Most of California, other places in the United States, under severe drought and fire. And here we still play in church. You, you gotta speak to me nice before I come to church. You don't need to. With you or without you, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You don't need anything to entice you. You don't need it. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. The day will come suddenly if they have told us in BC and in Saskatoon two years ago, one and a half years ago, fire will come and you will lose all of your home and belonging. It's probably won't, you know. Pray if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves. Pray and turn away from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven. I will heal their land. We put in our trust in government. They've been fighting this fire for how long? But well, we need to pray for rain. And if sincerely, if we believers can pray for sincere rain, look at the rain we're having in Ontario. Do we truly need all that much? No. We need that rain over there. And ask, you shall receive. Our brothers and sisters are going through so much. The firefighters are tired. How much more can we lose? And with all this heat and all this this thing, what is the next to follow? Earthquake. Please think about all this thing. And the more of this thing is pestilences. Things are about to go forward. What did the Bible not tell us? Do you need somebody or do you need a special prophet to tell you? The answer is in the word of God. Pray and believe God. I'm not going to sugarcoat things to you. I told you it's about Christ. It's about him. And that's what I'm telling you. Trust and obey Jesus Christ. For there's no other way. Jesus is the way. 
let us come. Let us trust in him. If you've been born again and you're not so sure what your faith, who you are, what you are anymore, maybe you've been whining of late, you've been complaining, you know, you need to man up, you need to woman up, whatever word, excuse me if it's the right word, and follow Jesus Christ. He did not say there will be no trial. He did not say there will be no tribulation. The house of the Lord is here. Check out even the spirit of the pastors. What are they preaching to you? What are they sharing? What comes after? Praise be to God. My eternity matters. And I come in here, I'm done playing. I'm done trying to make people feel okay. Whether you're small or old, it's time to awaken from the slumber in the name of Jesus Christ. So at home, here, will you invite Jesus Christ just as I am? You know, will you invite Jesus Christ into your heart? 